So I've been meaning to play around with Drizzle ORM. I just haven't really found the time. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to start a brand new project using Next14. I'm going to try to do all of the conventions with server actions. And then I'm going to use Drizzle instead of Prisma for this application. Um, the thing I'm going to try to build is like a pantry food tracker app where I can track the things in my fridge, my pantry, maybe set expiration time so I know when I need to replace stuff. And just get a good itemized list of like what do I have in my house so when I go shopping I can tell if I need to buy something or not. Will I actually use this app? I don't know, but it's just something to build. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was Drizzle because this is the focus of this video. Drizzle is an ORM um, which kind of acts as like a SQL query builder. It's not really um, as ORM-ish as a Prisma, but they do have a lot of uh, features that are kind of on par with Prisma and the benefit of it is that it's a little bit more simplistic in terms of hosting. The thing I've run into with Prisma is that when you deploy it to a Lambda function, there's a lot of extra configuration you need to do, such as setting up like a Lambda layer that wraps all of the Rust binaries that you can run Prisma in a Lambda function. And it's just, it just seems kind of dirty, right? It just seems like a lot of overhead for a simple way to read and write to a database, which is why I'm kind of investigating Drizzle. I've heard some good things about it. Drizzle has support for various things, right? So the first thing I want to show is Drizzle ORM. This is basically a SQLite builder, which I'll show you my project. I have a DB directory here, and inside of this, you can define a schema. So in our case, we are going to be storing some type of item, like food items, in a database. So you can declare a Postgres table like this, and you can define some columns on that table. You can also add indexes and stuff like that. And then also I'm exporting a type so that I can use throughout my code when I fetch data from the items table. Second thing that I'm doing is in this index file, I'm creating a drizzle connection. So I'm basically saying, hey, you know, use Postgres, connect to a URL that's running locally, and then set up a drizzle object here using that schema I defined in the other file. And then this DB object I'm using in my React server components in Next.js. Now, this project, when I do commit it to GitHub, I am using Docker Compose to spin up a Postgres database. I plan to add as many things to this to make it production ready. So I'm hoping to make this like a good scaffold project that people can download or clone or follow just to get an idea of like what a production ready application might look like. I'm also gonna to try to add in some unit tests and also Cypress for end-to-end -end testing as well. It's got Shad CN for the UI, it's got Tailwind CSS, et cetera. So now the next part is once I have these connections in the schema, how do I actually like, you know, set up my database? Because when you first create a database, it doesn't have any tables on it. So inside the package JSON, I added some scripts that I found from another project where basically you can generate your migration scripts by running this command. Um, you could potentially drop your table by writing this command, and then you can do a DB push to run your migrations against um, a database, right? So if I look at this drizzle config real quick, this is where you kind of configure where your migrations are going to live. Notice that it's saying put the migrations in a drizzle migrations directory. You use the Postgres driver. This is the connection st string that we're going to use to authenticate with the database. And then we have the schema file, which I kind of talked about. So this is all, you know, set up via drizzle kit, which is another library that they provide. There's documentation here. If you click drizzle kit, they'll walk you through how some of this stuff works. And so once you have drizzle kit installed, you can actually generate your migrations like so you do drizzle kit generate colon pg for postgres and then you point it to the config file and now when you run that you're going to get some sql files that are going to create your table like this so the idea is that as you're changing your schema you can run your you know migration generate that's going to create more migration scripts and at some point you have to apply them to your database so in our case we have an alias called db push that just runs this command so it's very similar to Prisma. It has like the same functionality of like automatically generating your migrations, automatically applying them. There's probably some caveats I haven't learned about yet. I don't even know what this metadata uh, directory is. I'll have to read about that. So those are the two main things. Now the third thing I want to talk about with Drizzle is Drizzle Studio. So Drizzle Studio is very similar to Prisma Studio where you have access to your database. You can actually go through here. You can view all your data. You can delete stuff if you want to. You can add in new things. Honestly, this is exactly like Prisma Studio. So there's really nothing much more to kind of mention about Drizzle Studio. It's just basically a nice UI that you can view and inspect your data. All right, so that's kind of it for the Drizzle side of things. I do want to do a quick walkthrough of how the actual like React server components are set up in the client components. So the way this page is set up is we have an items list, 
which is taking all the items that we downloaded from um, the database using Drizzle. I sort them by name and I just display them here. So there's nothing too fancy going on here, but I do want to point out that in order for the delete functionality to work, I basically call a delete action, but I'm calling bind so that I can attach some context such as the item ID to that delete item action so that I have access to it right here. So notice here, it's just doing a delete item from Drizzle and then I revalidate the path so that when I were to click on one of these, it's going to refresh that list and get some fresh data from the database. Now, the other interesting thing I wanna point out is the create items form. So this one is a little bit more complex and the reason I'm you know, adding all this complexity is because I want this to work with JavaScript disabled or enabled, right? I want that progressive enhancement and one way to achieve that is by using this use form state and additionally, I have this use effect to basically clear out the form and show a toast when the message comes back as successful. Okay, so the way this works is we basically use the form state, we pass it a create item action. That gives us access to some state that's gonna be kind of shared between the back end and the front end. And then we, it wraps your server action. So I'm kind of renaming this to on create action, and that's what we pass down here to the form. So action equals on create action. Um, all of this is just shad cn stuff just inputs error stuff like that um, but whenever the error occurs i'm basically saying get the form state find the errors field and go ahead and display this error if there is an error with the name property um, for input the thing to point out here is i'm using default value this is necessary to get it to work with javascript and kind of persist your ui once the user submits the form and an error happens so i'm setting the default value based on that form state I'm setting a ref on the form here so that we can reset it when everything works well. Um, and then down here, the submit button, I'm using use form status so that I can show a little bit of a, you know, a loading indicator inside of the button when the form is being submitted. So if I were to go ahead and just kind of throttle this down a little bit and type in like milk and, tip, and type enter, notice that the button does become gray and it kind of refreshes the page. I don't know why the Tailwind CSS gets all messed up. Um, I think it's my JavaScript disabled. I know, it's kind of weird. I need to look into that. But that's why I'm doing the use form status here. And the last thing to point out is the initial form state. So I'm just basically defining some object here that has a form, it has a status of pending, success, or error, and also has an errors map. Okay, so when the action runs, I'm basically using Zod. I'm creating a schema using Zod and saying this name is required. It has to be a minimum length of two. I'm going to change that back to one. And then what I do is I get the submitted data by just saying form data dot get name and I cast it to a string so TypeScript is happy. And then I do a try catch around this. I take the data that was submitted, I pass it to that Zod schema and I parse it. And then I pass that to Drizzle so I can insert it into the database. I tell Next.js to revalidate the current path that we're on. And then I return a brand new form state which the client component form can kind of use to show the toes, show the alert and clear out the inputs. So when an error happens, I'm basically casting this to a Zod error. I'm going to flatten it so I can get the actual field level validation errors. And I'm returning a new data structure here where I have those errors kind of listed out. And that's how I'm able to take those errors and print them out on the form down here. Again, all this code will be on the GitHub repo. So check out the link in the description. But that's about it. I just wanted to start working on a project with the latest version of Next.js using server actions, using Zod, using Drizzle ORM. And I want to just have a place that other people can kind of look at the code and understand how to quote unquote build a production ready next application. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment if you guys are interested in me adding anything specific to this pantry tracker application. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out or talk to some other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.